Well, it's another beautiful day in Florida. Clear blue skies. It's uh, not, it could be about 10 degrees colder and I would be super stoked, but it's, I mean, it's still really nice weather. It's probably 75, maybe 80, but probably about 75. It feels, feels very nice, very nice. Warm enough to be warm, but not so warm that you're sweating. I love it. I've been loving this Florida weather lately. I've been, been pretty lucky this season. I moved, where I moved now is about an hour north of Orlando and it, it definitely stays a bit cooler up here, which is nice. So today we're going to be working on La Miata. We've got a lot of stuff to do to it. We've got rear drop knuckles. We've got oil pressure sensors so we can find out if the engine actually has any oil pressure. It's good to know, right? Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we've got the oil cooler set up. Uh, we've we got a bunch to do. We've got a bunch to do. We might go karting tonight, so I need to get on it. We've got the Subaru harness packaged up. So this is the entire wiring harness out of the GC. I'm gonna get that sent out today to iWire Services so that they can get started on it. That way, while we're finishing all the tidbit stuff on the Miata, that'll be getting going. I might see if Adam has time to paint it now uh, while it's all taken apart and just take it over to him and get the paint done first uh, while the harness service is going on. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I gotta figure that out. But anyway, got our destroyer die drop knuckles. So these are 35 or 40 mil drop. I always forget every time I go to make this video and tell you guys about it. But these are sick. So they're dual caliper knuckles. But they're also drop knuckles. So let me set the car on the ground and show you guys. I am gonna raise it anyway, but show you guys the angle of the control arms with the car without the drop knuckles, because that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna move basically where the hub mounts on up, so that'll allow the arms to be straighter at a lower ride height. So, let me drop it down and show you guys what that looks like. This is about the ride height I plan to run, maybe maybe a tiny bit higher than that to kind of match the front. So let's see what the angle of the arms is. See how angled up the arms are? So, the drop knuckles should get us about flat at this ride height. So that's the whole point of drop knuckles for those of you who don't know. It just corrects your suspension geometry. Got new bearings, got new hubs, I need to grab those. Uh, new wheel seals, so we'll put these all together and get them on the car. First side came off super easy. I still need to build custom upper control arms. These are offset to bring the camber out so I can get zero camber or so. Um, but what people do is they weld like a tab and an eccentric here so you can easily adjust the camber without having to change your toe, which is what you have to do with the factory arm because as you pull it in or out, you change your toe. So I would, I really wanna do that. Matt's supposed to be making the pieces for me. I just keep forgetting to ask him about it, so. I need to get that done. I've been waiting to do that to put different upper arms on. But for now, these work. Martin at Monster Miata sent me some new hubs. We can have basically two whole sets of knuckles in case I crash and somehow destroy one. So, and plus it's kind of like a pain to get the race off hubs once you've driven on them. The inner bearing race just never wants to come off. It's such a pain. Very hyped on these. So, uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and just start pressing this all together. I need to press the bearing and press the hub in. Oh gosh, I almost dropped it. Press, or, and then just tap the seal into the back. Easy peasy. I always have trouble with this, honestly. <laughs> the, it's hard to get the knuckle level enough, so when you press it in, the bearing wants to go in crooked, and then, you know, it gets caught, and it's just, wish me luck, basically. <laughs> Moral of the story. <laughs> parts on the new knuckles, got the new bearings in, the hubs, the wheel seals, the, I swapped over the energy bushings for the top, so they are ready to go back on. It actually went quicker than I thought so far. It was a lot easier to press bearings and stuff into these, including the bushings, than uh, stock ones. Like, they're tight fit, but they're not, it was, it was a lot better, basically. Moral of the story. <laughs> Got 
the drop knuckles on. These went on super easy. There was no fighting on the caliper to get the calipers to line up and on. Like everything honestly was easy. The only issue I had is with the big energy suspension bushing washers um, and the stepped lip of the RS8, it, the washer was like almost touching the wheel. So I just put smaller washers on. I'll keep an eye on it and see if it's an issue, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't see why it would. It's not like the thing can back out from there. So gonna let it ride. Oh, I need to torque the, uh, I gotta wait till I put the car on the ground and do that anyway. Uh, what else, what else? Raise the car up to max high on the coilovers, which should, I would think it should at least compensate for the drop knuckle. Uh, hopefully it'll raise it a little bit because I did need to raise it a little bit either way. But get you guys a little, Look at these, they look snazzy in there. It is kind of funny how I have like light gray and dark gray, that's a match. Got my new oil pressure sensor for my Auber Instruments gauge. So I had a bunch of these fittings that LSX Innovation sent me when I got the brackets from them. They sent me a bunch of different fittings uh, for me adapting all my stuff, which is awesome. We had the right fitting that we needed to adapt from the big factory oil pressure size to the eighth MPT of my aftermarket sensor. So we're gonna throw this in. Hope we actually have oil pressure because we don't know. We have no clue. Okay, oil pressure sensor is in and working. It's funny because when I first plugged it in, it didn't work. I was a little nervous because the factory GM one has the same plug as the Auburn Instruments, you know, pigtail does. So I plugged that in, like this is gonna work great. It didn't work. So I was like, oh, either the sensor's bad or just it's not calibrated right. Like it's not the same signal output so it won't work or something, you know? Then I plugged this one in, same thing. I'm like, oh crap but I just had the wires, the signal and ground wi or power wires backwards on the thing. So all good, no need to be alarmed. Works great, started up, has 50 PSI, but I have the brake booster vacuum unhooked. I was gonna start it up for you guys, but I need to fix this jankiness first. So I've got a bunch of hose barbs to do like three eighths to half inch for this, so it's not so janky. And then I've got a T for here to go from 3 8 and that way I can run this 3 8 up to the catch can and then tee off to the vacuum reference for that. Uh, another tee for something else somewhere. So yeah, we got more tinkery stuff to do before we start on the old core. Just give you guys a before and after of my hose routing. Finished up all my hose routing, here's the after. So I've got that one that goes down, comes through here and goes back to the intake. And then I've got the vacuum reference for the fuel pressure layer coming off this T. I didn't want to do it that way, but there's just not that many vacuum sources on an LS. There's this one, there's one over here which goes to the map, which I don't want to interrupt. And then there's the brake booster, which I got the reducer fitting for that hooked up. So it all, all proper now, three eighths to a half inch. We've got our check valve, our factory check valve in there. And then, I guess that's it, right? Um, but yeah, it comes over from that valve cover to a T back here. And then this valve cover comes into the T and then they both go to, oop, into the catch can and then back out. Oh, very happy with that. I hated the hose just running over there, but it was just a temporary solution. <laughs> so I don't have time to put the oil cooler on tonight because we were going karting. Um, it's like kind of for my girlfriend's birthday. Her friends, Kelsey and Tabby want to surprise her, so. Ben almost died, fell off the dirt bike. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you in the morning. All right, we are back at it. So today we have a, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. We're trying to go to the Turkey Rod Runs tonight, which will be its own thing, because uh, that should be a fun trip. It'll be a two hour drive each way in the Miata. Uh, the Turkey Rod Runs are wild. It's like this giant classic car show with rat rods and the, all sorts of stuff. Crazy drag cars and stuff. It's really fun, really fun. So anyway, what we're doing today, Ben is working on replacing this circuit breaker. If you guys remember, I got this as like my main kill disconnect. And a lot of you were like, don't put that in the video. I have I have hidden sources of how to turn my car off. So don't worry about that. But uh, this is just to be able to, you know, disconnect the battery and a circuit breaker if anything shorts, but it just randomly stops working. Like with the thing, it, like it won't trip. It'll still be connected and just randomly stop working and you'll tap it and it'll work again. So we're switching to just a, uh, this. <laughs> Just an A&L fuse holder I got off Amazon. So that way we're covered if there's a shortage, but we're good otherwise. The other thing we are doing is oil cooler. I got this nice black Mishimoto oil cooler core. Got our dash 10 fittings, dash 10 wine. And then these are specifically mass motorsports fittings for my pan. Uh, mine, my pan's like an LX conversion pan and it has built-in fittings in the side for an oil cooler or a remote filter. So I. You're supposed to use their specific fittings. So I got those. 
So we're gonna throw those in, throw the oil cooler on. So I'm gonna figure out how to mount it, where to mount it and all that stuff. Kind of make the lines first. That way I can try to like quickly just do it all and lose as minimal oil as possible because I always run Mobile One 1550 and I went to Walmart and one, they didn't have any in stock. Two, it went from like $21 per five quarts to 27. So screw that. Okay, so I think I figured out where I'm gonna put the oil cooler. So I was thinking about putting it to this bar, but then I can only get one bolt in the mounting hole. So I'm probably going to weld a little tab towards the top here so I can get it closer to the radiator and a little bit further up and then just bolt it to that. So that's pretty much my plan. So you get this intake off, make some little brackets real quick and get to it. Get the holes drilled on the plate for the brackets. Uh, I just need to cut them with a chop saw. So I'll cut it there, cut it there, bolt them onto this, um, and then I'll mock it up and tack them with them bolted to this. So I, you know, get the orientation and everything correct. And we'll weld it out and then we'll make the lines and then stuff. All right, Ben's working on getting the coilovers off and swapping the shocks for my old coilovers in because now with the drop knuckles, it's too low. I got the brackets made, bolted on to the cooler. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the bar, get these tacked up. I decided to mount it up. Ben made a good point, you know, just to keep the lines. They weren't below the radiator, but the radiator does sit kind of low. So we decided to mount them up so that keep them out of the way in case of dumb things happening, like running over stuff. <laughs> back in we still need to set ride height and check alignment same with the front we think the front is towed way out <laughs> got the oil cooler on this bar is crooked i welded it like at the same spot on each side of this and it ended up being crooked i should have leveled it when i welded it originally but that's okay uh, so i welded this a little crooked to even it out and make it at least the oil coolers level <laughs> looks nice there though oh yeah so that's solid it'll probably settle a bit yeah, that's like plenty high yeah. Yeah, which it should come down about half an inch. So that should be good for our road trip at least. Put the tires on backwards though. Stuntin' strikes, strikes again. again. Woo! We should make Careless Ben stickers. Careless Ben t-shirts. No. Picture of you like tripping over a ten thousand dollar engine and knocking it off the side of a cliff. <laughs> Never done that. Ah well, we we'll put it back. New musical experience you can have. Okay, we got the lines made and ran, making uh, AN fitting braided lines. Someone's like, they're not AN lines, they're AN fittings on the comments section. So AN braided lines, AN fitting braided lines <laughs> is actually pretty easy. The big ones are a lot easier to make. It's a lot easier to get the uh, braided line into the fitting, but yeah, we got them both made, we got them ran. I ran them through the sway bar bracket for now. Uh, I think that'll be a permanent solution just cause I can zip tie them to this edge and the bolts shouldn't interfere. You know, just keep it from being in harm's way, I guess. So now we just gotta pull these fittings out. I hope that they don't pour fluid out while we do it and then throw the other fittings in, throw these on. The only thing I'm worried about is it's gonna be a little close to the exhaust on this side but should be all right. Got the lines in, minimum oil leakage. We obviously have to add oil for the little bit that came out. And then also, you know, because we have an oil cooler now, so you gotta fill the lines and fill the uh, oil cooler. So what's nice is the way I have the kill switch set up. I can turn the ECU off so the fuel pumps off everything. It won't start and just run it, like turn it over a little bit, get the oil pumping through, then add fluid. So looks pretty snazzy though. Give you guys another look at it before we rip put the bumper back on. Pimpin', don't judge my crooked bar. Okay. Looks great, Taylor. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Hey, the Meow is back on the ground. She's loaded up, ready to ride. Aligned, we didn't check the rear because I didn't want to change it. So if I knew it was bad, I'd want to change it, but I didn't want to change it, so we didn't check it. 
<laughs> so, uh, that is gonna be it for this video. Glad we got the oil cooler on, rear drop knuckles. Um, two big things that I wanted to get done, so I'm glad we were able to get them done. Uh, so I will see you guys as we're heading to the turkey rod runs. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Say bye, Ben. See you later.